everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Paris and I'm the author of the Magi Trilogy. Book one is coming out two weeks from when you guys are watching this video, so I am very, very excited for it. In today's video, we're going to be doing something kind of fun and it involves my laptop, which I have ready right here. Now, I'm not going to be sharing stuff from the Magi specifically, however, I am going to be reading some scenes from some of my other um, writing projects and some of my older whips. We're going to be starting with the very first book I wrote, Running From Riches. Alright, so I wrote Running From Riches when I was 16 years old, and it is the very first novel I wrote. I wrote it using a program called OYAN, the One Year Adventure Novel. And it was actually a really great program. I definitely recommend it. They actually have a novel writing contest for teens every year using the program, and I'm actually entering it this year in a few days. I'll mention that a little more further in the video. But for now, I'm going to be telling you guys a little bit about this first novel, Running From Riches. I wrote it when I was 16 years old. I'm going to read the synopsis to you guys, and then I'm going to read just some random quotes, maybe a couple scenes, just from a few different projects, actually. Because you know what? Sometimes it's fun to laugh at yourself and your old writing. So here's the synopsis. Jack is 16 and in his sophomore year of high school. He and his best friend, Stan, are walking to class when a voice comes over the loudspeaker, asking him to come to the principal's office. Jack is about to enter the office when a girl grabs his arm and pulls him aside. A girl with the same voice as the speaker. <laughs> Sorry, I made that sound so intense. Jack, you've got to help me. If he catches me, he'll kill me. You're the only one I know I can trust. We need to go. Now. Jack and Stan follow this girl to soon find out that they are in more danger than they thought. But Jack has a secret fear that won't let him turn back, even at the risk of his life. Will Jack and his friends survive? And whoever's going to kill this girl? Will he kill them too? So that is the synopsis of my first ever project. Um, not gonna lie, it sounds so intense. <laughs> and for what? Um, yeah, so it's a lot of fun actually. And speaking of what I want to do in the future of the project, I mentioned this a minute ago, is I think I want to rewrite this project. I want to rewrite it as a middle grade. My character's in it, they're 16. Um, don't really act 16, so I think I actually want to bump him down to being 13 or so and rewrite this as a middle grade novel because I think it has potential, but right now, let me find some scenes for you guys and you'll you'll get the vibes. All right, here is a scene where one of my characters is considering eating out of a dumpster. Now, since I want to rewrite this project, I can't give you guys full context, so you're just going to get right in the center of it is she sighed and rolled her eyes. Fine. And did you have to mention lunch? I'm starving. I'm so hungry. I'm tempted to check out the dumpster, Stan said. Ew, Stan, that's disgusting. What? We might seriously need to resort to that, Joanne. You should get used to that idea. No, that's disgust. The door to the gas station swung open and the man walked out with a cigarette in his mouth. He looked surprised to see us. <laughs> so that is a scene in chapter four. Um... Chapter four is called Our New Buddy. There's actually chapter titles in this. I forgot about that. But yeah, I have a bunch of like random um, chapter titles in that one. So that's my favorite one probably is Our New Buddy, the chapter title aspect of it. Let me see if I can find another scene for you guys. And then we're going to go on to my next whip, which is The List. All right, honestly, the logic on this scene, I don't think, can you just straight stab a tire with a knife? I don't think that's going to work. Um, may maybe it would. I've personally never slashed someone's tire tires, so I can't really speak from experience. But Jack straight up stabbed somebody's tires with a pocket knife. He's My lips curled into a small smirk. I'm gonna slash his tires. My heart was racing as adrenaline pumped through my veins. Um, let me see. He goes around. He gets two of the tires, and then he almost gets busted. And then <laughs> he and Jan get in jo Joanne get in a bit of a fight here. And then let me see, let me find, where is the line I'm looking for? Okay. So, geez, I lost it. Once hidden, she punched my arm. Ow, what was that for? Being stupid, she smiled softly. Let's get going. Even with slashed tires, we have no time to spare. I don't even know why I'm reading it in this voice. I make fun of it, but honestly, I actually, this whip is always going to have a special spot in my heart because it's my first. And like I said, I want to rewrite it someday. But I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite projects I've ever written, and that's The List. I don't think I'm going to be sharing the full synopsis with you guys. I did post it on Instagram a long, long time ago, but 
this whip I actually could see myself also revamping and publishing one day because it's one of my favorite stories I've written. Um, the gist of it is it is a romance, which is funny because I told myself I would never in a million years have a romance subplot in my story. Six months after that, I wrote I wrote a romance novel. Um, and honestly, there's a couple of cool things about it is I actually have like text messages in it. Let me see if I can show you guys my screen here. So you guys are actually getting a peek at this page. But I actually have like text messages sent in it. So I guess it's technically an epistolary novel. Um, and for technically speaking, but let me find a couple of out of context quotes because this one definitely has some very random lines in it. Guys. <laughs> I forgot. The doctor's name in this book is Dr. Getwell. Here's his introduction. Hello, Alexandra. I'm Dr. Getwell. Getwell, I thought, confused. He chuckled. The name is real. Sometimes I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. He came over and adjusted the IV tubes that was in my arm. How are you feeling? Okay. I obviously don't know anything about nursing and this is cracking me up because I left a comment on it. Let me see, when did I leave this comment? This is January 9th. Come on, scroll over. I think probably 20, I don't even know. It's not letting me, come on, let me see it. I would like to see when I wrote this comment. When was I judging myself? Because it's funny. Okay, but why? Here we are, here we are. January 9th, 2021. So this is like over a year old and I just commented on it, but why? Good question. Why is he randomly adjusting her IV tube? That does not seem healthy. But that's an introduction to Dr. Getwell, one of the most iconic names I ever had. Um, it cracks me up. Like, there's there's no point to it. I just thought it was funny. And I was adding to it. Let me try to find another, another bit of a funny scene for you guys. All right, I told you guys this is a romance novel, so let's read a bit of the scene where the the two the main couple, Peter and Alexandra, they start to get to know each other a little more. Now, there's a series of unfortunate <laughs> events that happen before and after this. This is not a regular couple. Um, like I said, I'm keeping the synopsis a bit of a secret because I think I want to revamp it, and then if I end up publishing it, I'm going to be like more straight up revealing everything. But for now, let's get to know them a little more because their circumstances... They don't get to learn about each other right away. They're kind of thrown into something that they have to deal with. But here's their first chance to have a fun conversation. I broke the silence. You know, Peter, other than basic stuff, I don't know that much about you. Oh, what do you want to know? What's your favorite color? Green. What's yours? Blue. But not like regular blue. The color of the sky blue. Almost turquoise. Fun fact, that is actually my favorite color as well. And 100% the reason why that's Alexandra O'Healy's favorite color. Oops, got a text. All right. Oh, that's a heart. Wait. Okay, he nodded. All right. I've got a good question. If you could have any superpower, what would you have? That's a hard one. I know. The power to have any power. He raised his eyebrow. Sneaky. I was just going to say to fly. But man, you kind of outdid me on that one. I laughed. I outdid you on the color one too, since blue is better than green. Hey, we both laughed. And for the first time since I had met him, I was truly happy. It felt good to just talk. After more silly questions, the talk got more serious. I wonder what the serious topic is that came up. You guys are just gonna have to wait to find out. Running for Riches was written using a program, like I said before, One Year Adventure Novel, and they have a novel writing contest. Now, I actually have another novel that I wrote um, for using the program. I kind of more so based it off of the program. It's called Unforgotten Souls, and I'm going to be entering it into this contest in I think four days? The deadline is August 15th. Now, I did not realize they were still having the contest this year, so I found out on August 3rd that I had an unedited novel sitting on my laptop ready for a contest that was due in under two weeks. So <laughs> I um, went back, I literally resorted to sticking the entire novel in Grammarly and just going through editing because that's really all I had time to do. And while I've been editing it this week, I have run into a lot of random, crazy, out of context lines. Now, a bit of a background, you know what, actually, I'm going to straight up, I'm going to pull up the synopsis. I'm going to give you guys the synopsis to this one because I've already shared it and it will give you guys some context for it. Zira thought her life was over when her psychotic boyfriend pushed her off of a cliff. And she was right. Kind of. After falling for what seems like ages and eventually landing at the bottom of the cliff, she sits up and walks out of her body. Zira has entered the in-between. In other words, the land of the lost dead which is actually the land of the living. 
When greeted by another ghost, General Conley, he informs her of all the rules dead people must follow. One, don't try to interact with the living. It doesn't work and will only leave you with heartbreak. Two, don't steal from other ghosts. And the most important rule of all, never walk in on a dying human. The in-between is a stage of death between heaven and hell. The only way out is to prove your worth in heaven. In order to do that, you must complete several important tasks, think only of others, and ultimately make the choice to do good. Zira sets off to earn her passage to heaven and soon gets caught up in a deadly, name, deadly game with Kaiser, the man who Albi accidentally brought her here. If she succeeds, she gets her wish, but if she hesitates and fails her mission, she will end up his prisoner for all eternity. All right, so... It's obviously very intense and Unforgotten Souls has a lot of moral lessons in it. It's actually really the first novel where I really wanted to get a moral lesson coming across. However, that being said, my sense of humor also comes across in it. And seeing as it is a book about ghosts, I make a lot of out of pocket death jokes in this book. One line, actually one of the most recent lines I've edited, is Zira is upset about something and she's literally, she is sitting on the ground crying and she's like, all I wanted to do was die. Well, I had already done that. Like girl, calm down. She goes, in her defense, she goes through a lot of stuff in the couple, in the first couple of days she's been in the in-between. Um, there's another line where another character, he's like, you two are lucky I didn't ca I care for you. He's like, if I wasn't dead, you two would be the death of me. So there's a lot of fun, fun, chaotic lines in this one, at least that I think are funny. Um, if you guys don't have my sense of humor, you're probably thinking right now, Paris, are you, are you okay? I am okay. I am enjoying editing this actually because of all of the random jokes in it. That being said, it does have a lot of moral lessons in it. Um, it's really unforgotten souls. It's really meant to show that you're never forgotten by God. That's really the ultimate the ultimate lesson of the book and there's actually several other lessons as well but that's the main one there so i'm entering that in a novel contest in a few days on top of the fact that i'm publishing in two weeks so i have a lot going on i actually just yesterday i finished re-editing the magi i went through i did some more edits and tomorrow which is gonna the day actually tomorrow is the day you guys are watching it so i guess today i'm posting a whip excerpt from the magi which is actually why i haven't read anything from the magi in this video is i'm actually posting an excerpt of it on instagram today so definitely check it out it's same handle on instagram that's here paris and her books make sure to check it out because I would love to hear your thoughts. And honestly, I'm trying to build some hype in the final two weeks before release. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed getting a little bit of a sneak peek at some of my other whips. Although those are older ones that if I do end up going further with them, they are going to be revamped and rewritten. But I hope you enjoyed hearing some random chaotic lines, some kind of sweet scenes, but honestly a little bit cringy because I didn't really know what I was doing. And I hope you guys also enjoyed the updates regarding Unforgotten Souls and the Magi. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and comment down below if you'll be interested in me sharing more of my more of my whips in general and reading maybe some more excerpts, or maybe, maybe you could convince me into making a video dedicated to reading all of my whip synopsises. No promises, but you guys could try, so comment down below. Thank you guys again for watching. Have a great rest of your morning, evening, night, whatever time it is. Have a great day.